What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Official Gang Sets and Music. Before we get started, please make sure you hit that subscription button and also that like for the algorithm. All right, man, let's get into this shit. Today, we're going to go all the way to San Jose. I talk about West Side Mob. Obviously, the West Side Mob is located on the west side of San Jose. They're located on the west side of San Jose in the Alamo community. Um, they've been around since the 70s. Um, before, I mean, uh, Vario Libre was, was around since the 70s. And uh, eventually, that... Um, Evolved into West Side Mob around the 80s. West Side Mob, uh, they have many, many uh, sets. Like uh, San Carlos Mob, Vario Libre Mob, um, and Eastbound Mob, to name a couple. If you guys may or may not know, uh, a rapper that goes by the name as uh, Frank Gucci, or gangster Frank Gucci. This is his hood. He's... Um, He's a pretty good rapper. I'm about to show you guys his uh, music video real quick. Find a bad bitch and that pussy's getting beat up. Got that fire, got that chronic like the weed up. In the hood, we throwing sixes like it's G's up. I don't ease up, chill, throw no peace up. I get two fucks, it's on till they bleed nuts. I bleed dubs, two face, I don't need up. I ran around with snakes that rather see me case up. Doing bad's not enough for these pussy fucks. That's why I'm mad and I blast at these pussy fucks. In the 90s. In the 90s, uh, you know, it was around the time where uh, there was a lot of red on red, which is a term for Norteño on Norteño. Um, West Side Mob, they used to get, they, I don't know if they still do, so I'm going to use past tense. Uh, they used to get into it a lot, uh, a lot of funk with uh, a lot of Norteños out there, especially with uh, Barrio Horseshoe. Um, it was said to me, um, shout out to... Uh, Frank, Mr. Frank Gucci out there. Um, I got some of the information from him, from his channel, if you guys don't know. If you guys don't know his channel, I'm going to leave the link in his description. And he talks about a lot of spills uh, from his barrio. Um, but yeah, um, barrio horseshoe, they used to go into uh, the West Side Mobs neighborhood, cross out the taggings. And all that shit, and uh, they don't. Uh, it was said that they never put up their own hood. They will put in uh, other other Nathaniel hoods that was there, not on the west side, but from other locations and shit, and it caused major major problems uh, between the west side mob and other Nathaniel hoods from around San Jose. Um, their their war um, with Vario Horseshoe. Um, had other Norteño uh, gangs look down, look down on West Side Mob, and it was to a point where the older, the older homeboys out there in San Jose, um, uh, had some pull with the NF, and they eventually had uh this hood greenlighted, um. It was said that the West Side Mob, in order for them to pull the green light, is they have to put, uh, they had to uh, kill a certain amount of Soreños out there. Um, I'm not gonna say how many they did, because obviously they're no longer green lighted. But uh, yeah, um, despite having tensions with the Vario Horseshoe, um, when the uh, uh, when Kraton was trying to take over Vario Horseshoe's territory, um, the older members of uh, VHS uh, approached the members from uh, the Vario Libre, which is uh, the, the, the first generation of that hood. Um, uh, they asked them for help. Um, and, you know, the, the mob got into it. They, uh, they uh, eventually helped, helped out the, the Horseshoe. And uh, which ultimately uh, halted uh, Clanton's um, takeover of uh, VHS's hood. 
and now uh, the West Side Mob they they get into a lot of funk with uh with a lot uh, with with every, almost everybody, but uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not I'm not I can't tell you who, but um, I'm just gonna point out to the obvious which uh, are the Soreños. So let's get into it. Um, they funked with uh with Vario Virginia Trece, Vario Tamil Gangsters, uh, Vario Colonia Trece. Colmar Vagos Dresse, Vario Locos Dresse, Vario Sreño, Malditos, Vario Sutown, uh, Isai Claton, Vario Peligrosos Locos, Vario Mexicano Locos, Sureños Por Vida, Vario Gramercy Locos, um, and uh, Su Santos Pride. I can't really say if the, they're still going going at it with Vario Horseshoe, but um, they've been their rivals f for quite some time, but I can't really call it. Um, so, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, but uh, let me pull up this article for you guys and let me read it to you about how much shit these, uh, these individuals got into back in the day. Samantha, Betsy, and George were working inside the Mayberry Street entrance of the San Jose flea market on December 19th, 2004, when they saw a fist fight involving six young Hispanic men. None of the witnesses had seen any of the men who were fighting before that day. Three of the six men appeared to the three witnesses to be Norteños. One was wearing a red and white shirt and red shoes and had a tattoo on his ear. One was wearing a black shirt and one was wearing a white sweatshirt. The three other men were wearing blue and appeared to be or appeared to the witnesses to be Soreño gang members. Before the fight, one of the Soreños said to a Norteño, Do you bang? One of the Norteños responded, Yeah, we bang, Puro Norte. The six men then fought in three groups, one on one. At trial, Samantha testified that she did not remember who threw the first punch, and Betsy testified that she did not see it. George testified that the Soreño wearing a blue sweatshirt threw the first punch and hit the Norteño wearing the red and white shirt. George also testified that he himself is a Sureño. The man wearing a white sweatshirt fell to the ground and one of the men wearing blue hit him in the face. The fight lasted less than a minute. After the fight, the man in the red and white shirt approached the man in the white sweatshirt and asked him why he let the guy hit him that way. The man in the white sweatshirt responded that he was not able to get the guy off of him. The man in the white sweatshirt, whose face was bleeding, then went into the flea market with the man in the red and white shirt. The three men in the blue went to the parking lot. One of those men, Frank Gonzalez, was treated by responding officers and ambulance personnel in the parking lot for a stab wound, but neither Samantha nor Betsy nor George saw a stabbing or any weapons during the fist fighting. San Jose police officer Greg Connelly, who was working in uniform as security for the flea market, received a report of a fight at the Mayberry Street entrance shortly before noon on December 19, 2004. When he responded to that location, Samantha told him that she had seen six men fighting, three Norteños and three Sureños. She said that the Sureño being treated for a stab wound was the one who started the fight with the words, do you bang? She said that the Norteño started to walk away, but one of them said to another, you're going to let him hit you like that? Then all of the men got into a fist fight. She said that she did not see any weapons and she did not see who did the stabbing. Officer Steve Wilson responded to the flea market on December 19, 2004, following the report of a fight. Upon his arrival, 
he reported to the officers treating Gonzalez in the parking lot, took pictures of Gonzalez's wounds, and watched Gonzalez being taken away by ambulance. Officer William Enos was directed to follow the ambulance carrying Gonzalez to the hospital. At the hospital, the officer took possession of the clothing Gonzalez had, wearing, had been wearing, a blue shirt, a gray tank top, a white jersey with the number 13 on it, and a blue baseball cap. The cap had sued on the top of the bill and 13 and BSM on the underside. Gonzalez was treated at the hospital for a stab wound in his upper abdomen that was about one half inch long and about one inch deep. This was official gang sets. Thank you for watching.